All right, so I want to try a live recording. Uh, the idea of a live recording being that uh, it kind of gives you the real-time playthrough like I would, like you would have if I were running a, um, so if I were running a stream, but on the other hand, because it'll be a recording, you have the ability to fast forward if you find parts are boring or uninteresting. And I also get the ability to pause in between games if I need to, so that I can um, pick up the recording where I left off, but uh, I don't lose uh, the ability to, you know, take a pause and do, you know, go be dad or do whatever I need to do around the house. So anyway, uh, this is the deck that I'll be playing. It's uh, Brea and uh, there are no significant changes. In fact, I haven't changed it in a while, mainly because I haven't played in weeks. And right now, nothing stands out as something I want to actually uh, change. So until I figure it out, I'm going to stick with what it seems to be working. Oops. And I have already joined this league, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm currently tied for second here with uh, two HNMR, uh, Barizal, and then, of course, myself at five. Quite a few people at four, many even more at three, and then Fluffy Pingo at nine. So hopefully we'll have interesting games, and I can give uh, FP there a run for his money. <clears throat> Maybe push up. I don't know. We'll get... If things go well here, we'll get six out of this one, and then we can try to push four, uh, seven, eight, or nine after that, pretend, perhaps. So, and as I said, um, while we're waiting, in my last video, I haven't, um, there we go, we're paired up already. Haven't played much in the last two weeks, actually. Didn't play Commander um, basically at all. So, um, hopefully I'm not too rusty. I suppose that's the other advantage of doing it as a live recording. I don't necessarily embarrass myself. Uh, okay, so here we are with a hand that I would very much have liked to have kept against Leovold, but I cannot uh, due to the fact that um, it's just too risky. If I draw a land, of course, this hand is great, but if I don't, this hand is dead, and I don't think I can risk that. So I'm going to have to mulligan once. Opponent mulligan once. He's keeping here. I do need to go get a sweeper. Demonic off of a Felwar stone gives me a way to do that, so I think I'll keep now. Um, so. Do I want remand? Um, it does give me the ability to stop a Leovold early. But in general, I don't think it's very good for me um, because um, because uh, my opponent w may have been mulliganing into a first turn elf, second turn Leovold, and in which in that case, then I don't end up doing too well with if I kept that. What I'd really like to see is more mana so that I can because right now I can't safely wasteland, but I'd like to. Okay, so I didn't find mana, so we're gonna go ahead and just play the basic island. Um, so I would have really liked to have seen an extra land there. And then that way I could have um, wasted the underground sea here before he has Leovold out, in which case he would draw a card off a of wasteland and I don't want to do that. So this gets a little bit unpleasant if he um, sits on counter magic, but it gets even worse if he does something like plays a Sylvan library. So Bingo. Uh, well, I probably can just concede now. Uh, this game is probably over. That's unfortunate. I'll go ahead and get my black mana out, but uh, I think I'm um, pretty sure I just lost the game, given that my opponent now gets to draw three cards, followed by three cards, followed by three cards. Um, for two mana. Seems like a hell of a deal. <laughs> yep. There's Ancestral Recall. Oh, he kept one, so... 
All right, so the Sylvan's paid for itself in cards, and after this, it's all all gravy. And his play is what? Cure a great glass spinner. I'm actually not too worried about that since the best thing I could do against Leovold would be to sweep the board. What I really want is a land. Very nice. So I can play Dark Confidant and try to make up some of this lost card advantage. I could play Talisman the Ready make a dork. Does this thing actually fly? It does fly. I could play Talisman Confidant. Um, but I think the right play here is um, Confidant Pass. Let me see. Whenever this creature becomes the target. All right. So I would like to Demonic Tutor at some point. Um, but, you know, we'll have to get there. I'm, it's, it's unlikely that I can win this game. Like, and this is the thing that, I, I mean, if my opponent doesn't do what he should be doing, yeah, I could win. Like, if he's not paying life for cards, then I, I don't understand it, but I'm happy to take somebody turn his um path to victory into a pat <laughs> into a non-victory um confidant does have the potential to at least keep up with sylvan but it's going to be a wow he just left him on top so again luckily i'm better this is why i slump in my seat because i see sylvan and i think well this opponent has won the game and then i face people who don't know how to use it correctly which it really isn't that hard you just pay three life every single time or you pay life to draw three over and over until um, until you win. So like, anyway, we're going to try to counter here. I'm going to try to counter here specifically um, only because it's a risk because he may kill Confidant, but um, any turn that Leovold's not on the table is a good turn, and I could potentially Wasteland him here. Um, like I could go Talisman, Demonic Tutor, and Wasteland him. All right, so. certainly an interesting card to have drawn so what other plays could i make which would stall you know on getting on having to deal with leovold for a little while so i could demonic for a land um so what i'm going to do first is attack with confidant if he fetches a um the creature the green creature arbor then I, I, I've got to waste it. So do I really want to do that? Do I want to waste a wasteland here? I don't I don't know that I do. Oh, no, I can't do that because it, it would be countered by Kira. Okay, so I have to be very careful here. Um, so, in the tank. I'm tempted to demonic tutor for like ancient tomb and then tomb tomb out a pro progress. Um, into a, another talisman, but I could one two, one two. I could just spin out talisman talisman DT. And I think I will do that. All right, so if I'm going to do that, we're going to run out uh, white first. Black. Come on, tap. Okay, so... And I think the card that I go get here, it's not intuitive, but I think I go get this one. 
So what I'm hoping happens is that my opponent plays his commander next turn. I would swing in for two here, but not against an untapped bird in catacombs. I really don't want to trade a dark confident for an arbor. I mean, it's unlikely that my opponent, just given the way he's playing, uh, is going to actually would have made that play or picked up on the fact that he could make that play. But while two damage does matter with the Sylvan Libraries, it's half a card. Um, I'm still not quite comfortable giving my opponent the option to trade a fetch land for a dark confident. It just doesn't seem like a good deal for me, even though, like I said, I don't think it would happen. Why the chances that it did happen are close to nothing, but not nothing. So I just, I'm not going to risk it. All right. So what I'm hoping here is he just plays a land, casts his commander, I daze it. And then on my turn, I get a uh, winter orb going, or I fetch a crucible, one, two, three, four, five. Couldn't quite fetch a crucible here, so I don't know. We'll see. Kept one card this time. And I'm not quite sure what's going on over there. We'll see. I also don't mind the idea of possibly worrying for a sword. But, um, or Jite, since Jite will deal with Kira pretty well. All right. Well, Mana Leak's quite good here. And Dak Faden is not bad at all. So, with Dak Faden, so I could waste my opponent. Then tap three, Dak Faden. Yeah, I think I will. So I'm going to waste here because I don't actually want to use the Mana Leak. So again, let's see if he spends it. Okay, he didn't. Well, that may have been a mistake. I could have played, but he hasn't hit a land drop for a few turns. So I could have played... Um, so I was thinking I'd play Dak Faden and take his Strix, but I keep forgetting about Kira. This this is a annoying problem, actually. Um, question is, if I minus the ready, do I have to choose the target and then the target will cancel? I think that's how that works, but... Um, I'm not 100 percent on that. So I really want to I really want to worry into Jays, but I think short term right now it probably makes more sense just to get um, my commander down. So let's do that. Red, black, blue, white. Because with Sylvan out, the fact that Brad does a pretty good amount of damage is actually something my opponent has to respect and uh i can effectively like turn his kira and baleful strix into a uh, fairly useless uh junk in a moment all right so we'll see if maybe fetching days was not correct, but I don't know. Feels pretty good so far. All right, so he's going to pulse the Brea. That's fine. I mostly I need Thopters for a couple of different things. One is to pressure my opponent, and the other thing is for um, war. And the ready, so. Very nice to have found land there. Okay, so I can tether it into Crucible, or I can whir into Sword. One, two, 
So if I were into sword, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, I can actually equip it and swing with Dark Confidant. And then he may either, he may decide to, um, so if I were into sword, right? So I would tap, say, three mana here, one, two, three mana there, one, two, equip the sword on Dark Confidant smash in. I either kill Kira or I kill a card in his hand and deal four to him, which effectively takes another card away from him due to the Sylvan. Even if he fetches the pro green guy, or the green, the arbor, um, it can block Confidant with a sword on it. After combat, I have three mana up and I can mana leak in days. Um, and then from there, I think I win. So the only question is like, how does this go badly? Um, and there aren't that many ways. I guess, I guess so if he blocks here and I don't get to untap the lands, then Kira is gone and I think things are much better for me. So I think that's the play I'm going to make, kind of talking myself into it. So we're going to go for that. I mean, the other option would be to wait and to go for Tezzeret here. Um, and if I went for Tezzeret here, then I would be able to... Uh, then I would be able to um, roar next turn. Make sure I pick the right card. Okay, there we go. I think this just makes a ton of sense. One way or another, I want Kira down or I want my mana back and I want to start smashing my opponent. So. He might have, I guess he could have Nature's Claim here, but then I just stays it, so. All right. This is good, because the pressure on his life total here is also extremely important, I think. All right, so I, I would like to play the Ready or Dak Faden, but I think it makes more sense to, like, I'm winning, so let's just sit, protect our position, protect a position here with a uh, Mana Leak. My opponent is tragically misplayed this this game and I'm quite happy about that so I think I should I honestly feel like I should build a like I almost want to build a deck with green in it just so that I can play with Sylvan Library you know in a format that isn't vintage and um, and uh, show why I believe the card needs to be banned but I can understand why people who play like uh, don't correctly use Sylvan don't think it's a big deal. Like my opponent should be up six cards this game, and I should have not. I should not be, you know, doing what I'm doing here because those six cards should prevent me from doing it. But hey, I am quite happy with how this is going. So, I mean, best case scenario, he goes land commander, and then we just, yeah, that's just an easy win. But um. All right, let's see what happens here. Thoughtseize. So I could actually mana leak the Thoughtseize because if my opponent taps out. Um, he's in such a bad spot after that. I can just daze. So I think I actually will do that. It takes his whole turn. Great. So that was an excellent sequence there because this isn't the beginning of the game. This is mid game. There's no, t my opponent doesn't have time to be wasting, like skipping a whole turn to not thought seize me, for example. Yeah, sure. Hit me with Baleful Strix. All right. I'll just keep getting cards and. I'm paying less life than he's paying for his Sylvan. He's not killing the Dark Confidant, so it's all good stuff. All right, so what's the right way to do this? Um, I want to spend the mana before combat, and I want to make sure I play um, the right cards. I didn't want to... I could have gone for Crucible here, but I think with a uh, sword running that the correct answer is Winter Orb, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. One, two, three... Uh, four or five. 
and scoop. Okay, so I just go get Winter Orb there. Uh, my opponent, of course, has to chump block at that point. I mean, he can't. I mean, what is he going to do? <laughs> if, he, if, he, if he doesn't chump block and I get all my mana back, then he's 100% lost. If he does chump block, uh, then he's 100% lost. <laughs> like, So I think it's scoop phase here. Um, I just leave the Thopters back, and uh, that way Tezzeret's almost assured to live. And then, even if he chumps, then on the next turn, he has the same dilemma. And, of course, I'll get all my mana back on that turn. Uh, Tezzeret will fetch up a Mox Opal. And, basically, it just goes so far downhill for my opponent that uh, there's no coming back. So, yay. Yay for misplays. Ah. All right. So, moving on to game two. And I don't think like it really necessarily even reflects poorly on, you know, Nasty Nick there. Uh, my opponent, uh, that he did not use Sylvan correctly. I just don't think that a lot of people have um, been exposed to the right way to play the card. And so they use it a lot like a Sensei's Divining Top with the occasional, you know, card keep, um, which I just don't agree with, which I think, I honestly think, the correct answer is, you know, you pay eight in this format, you pay eight and then you pay eight again. And then you think about it, maybe you pay four here or four there, but just right off the bat, um, dropping to 14 life, but drawing, uh, three cards followed by three cards in total, six extra cards over the course of two turns. Um, you should win any game you can do that in. Maybe maybe you don't do that against Mono Red. All right, but outside of that, and certainly any time you're facing Islands. All right, so round two. Hopefully we get something going here. Come on, opponent. All right, always good to win the roll. Let's see what we've got. Brawl. Chief of Annoyance. I have a smoking hot hand against Brawl. I am absolutely take, keeping this, especially going first. Phenomenally good hand. The fact that I can potentially go turn two Abyss and just crush his commander, and I also have a uh, Grim Monolith in my hand, or rather, uh, Cavern of Souls in my hand, is just amazing. So, you want to force a will that? I don't know. If I was him and I was holding force will in a wasteland, I might think about it. Probably wouldn't do it, but <laughs> wouldn't think that hard about it. All right. So what I want to do here is is charge the amulet, of course. God dang it! What is up with Magic Online? Tap for blue, charge the amulet. If it doesn't give me the blue quick enough, the amulet won't charge. All right. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. All right. So I can expose the cavern and play Grim and float the ancestral, which I think is the course that I'm going to take. Well, we'll see. All right, so he didn't have a, a force spike or something like that for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this ancestral running. Really nice top deck on that. Um, only because if he goes Baral here, I think I win. Excellent. And uh, having the ancestral running helps make that a, a true statement. So you cannot days okay excellent even better we'll see how he likes the abyss i'm guessing not at all chomp and until he gets rid of the abyss he can't get his commander down he also cannot actually win with emrakul um 
unless he were to get multiple creatures down in the same turn. An extremely difficult task for the Baral deck to perform. All right, so let's go ahead and charge up the amulet again. So now we've got Uncountable Brea threatening. We've got an Abyss running. Ancestral is up. Weird thing about Magic Online, it won't let you stack the Abyss in the order you want if there's no target for it. It's kind of actually annoying because it's not how the game should work, but we can't do much about that. All right, so let's keep an eye on this. This is on two. Now, what I really want to do is I want to whir out a Winter Orb. So if nothing happens here, I'm going to untap Grim Monolith. If my opponent wants to bounce Grim Monolith, well, that would be insane, right? Because there's an Abyss out. Okay, so he's going to just deep. All right, so this does take me off of um, some of the plays that I could be making, but I think having the extra mana is going to be better for me in the long run. Ah, ah. All right, next turn is Ancestral. So what I want to do, hopefully draw a blue or... Hmm. Okay, well, okay. Um... One more turn then. So Ancestral's coming next turn. I assume he's going to flashback deep analysis, but heck if I know. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay, so he can get a uh, Emra Cool into play. That's Emra Cool by me. All right, and step. I guess he just didn't want to discard. Doesn't want to draw cards, so he's he's saying, "Hey, I have a counter spell." So, but this is nice because he only has one available, most likely, which means I can go ahead and probably resolve this ancestral, which is the next big thing for us. I think. And I'll probably fight over it um, using Cryptic only because I can Whir Orb later. But it is very tempting to just Orb them right now. So it's draw four cards. I'm going to go for the four cards. All right, so we get a Mox, many other good things. As for told, what a hand. Okay, um, things to do. Can I, I actually didn't draw a land, a second land. So I think the play here is something along the lines of tax. So I could play the Mox, the Chrome that is, but I don't see any particularly pressing reason to do so. Um, I would like to will um, Ancestral Vision and play it off as foretold. Um, I would like to um, have Toxic Deluge in case my opponent staffs into like a gigantic artifact creature that I'm not expecting. I haven't seen that in those decks, but I have, I have seen this is a six mana card that makes a bunch of zombies. Another reason to hold on to Toxic Deluge. Um, I certainly don't want to get rid of Whir or As Foretold, and I can't get rid of Mox Diamond. So I'm going to keep the Chrome Mox, um, hoping to tax up into land and Mox Diamond next turn. My opponent wants to uh, staff away whatever, he can do that. If he wants to try to bribery me to beat me with something, he can do that. Obviously, his best card here is Palace Jailer. It is unfortunate for me, but not insurmountable since I have an uncountable Brea coming we'll just get Brea out and then if he so if he does get Jailer he's going to get to draw one card here uh, but then I start drawing two cards per turn for the rest of the game so yeah he fell into that trap that's fine by me okay 
So let's go get some. Let's go get some uh, islands. Come on, deck. All right, so I'm gonna throw a snow-covered island to Mox Diamond. Um, since my opponent's playing basic islands, in case he's running uh, Mana Flare effect based on land types. Um, hold on a moment, sorry. I'm going to mute it for a moment. All right, anyhow. Wow, Mox Opal. That's just savage. All right, well, let's go ahead and get my land down. Another land and some more mana. All right, so the question is, how much can I get done this turn? Um, I want to play as foretold. I want to play my commander. I don't really want to do all that much more than that right now, necessarily. I wouldn't mind orbing him. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, wait, does this have a charge on it? I can't even tell. How do I know if there's a charge on it? That's pretty obnoxious. Okay. I guess I have to try it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can... So three for whir. Uh, four... Four for Brea, three for Whir, and I end up a short a mana. So if I want to do it all, I am going to have to imprint Toxic Deluge under a Chrome Mox. But if I do that, black, black, red, white, blue, so there's Brea. I can actually cast everything. So I think I will for Tempo. Because I can always um, will a Cryptic and just go that route if I need to. All right, so black, white, uh, red, blue. Let's get an uncounterable Bray down so we can set up for the um, taking the Monarch back. Okay, three and a blue for as foretold. All right, blue, uh, blue, and more blue for whir. I'm going to tap guys to uh, cast this whir. I'm going to go ahead and improvise off of these because I want to whir for two, and I want to have one mana left over so that I can charge my amulet or pay for a four spike if he's got it. Okay, Winter Orb, good. Let's go ahead and charge this up. Pass for the turn. Seems like a good turn for me. We'll go ahead and tax up another land next turn. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and just yield. All right, so as for Toll's running, which means I can will up a Ancestral Vision. I can just will cast the Vision for zero. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six mana next turn, which means I'm actually one short of bouncing a creature if he goes and gets something absolutely crazy. But it'll be very difficult for him to do due to the uh, Winter Orb. You'd have to have one more mana up. So uh, not happening this turn, apparently. Okay, so we're going to always yield to this. We'll grab another land. Pearl Baral deck. Briberied me and everything. And he's about to get beat up by his own bribery. As is often the case, actually, I find. Bribery for Palace Jailer against Brea just seems pretty nuts, actually. Now, the good thing, too, is that because this is a target, not like put a creature you control, or, um, well, actually, even if it weren't, um, what will happen, though, is as this is a target, if he tries to target his 
factory next turn, for example, I can just use Brea to prevent that from happening. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is get in there and take the Monarch back. I don't really think I need to Yogwell here. I think it's just a bit, it's a bit early for that. I do want to leave up two mana um, for activating Brea. So I am going to go ahead and just play the Worn Power Stone and pass for the turn. Of course, I had two mana with um, the Jeweled Amulet, but it's fine. Okay, thank you. Leaves me with one land for scroll rack, but I can also daze or do whatever I need to do to go get more, so. All right, see, he had to waste a bounce spell on the orb because he couldn't riff my board, and now he can't riff my board. And he's still gonna deal with both Brea and the Abyss as well as all the other stuff. Pretty hard to do, we'll see. Order of succession, starting with you and proceeding, blah, blah, blah. Each player gains control of a creature of his choice. Da, da, da. So this is one way he can kind of get out of the box because he can sack off the Mishras. He can take the Bray and then sack off the Mishras. Um, I don't really, um, either way, he's gonna, get a, he's gonna get a creature. So the only question is like, do I wanna just give him a Thopter? Or don't want to give him Brea and then let him let him kill it. And I keep two Thopters. I think keeping two Thopters is better than keeping one. So, okay. All right. So go ahead and. I'm going to always know and always yield due to the pressures of the clock. All right, so I've got a zero mana uh, Winter Orb if I want it. I'm going to go ahead and just cast Orb. I assume it's going to get countered here. Wow, okay, interesting. Interesting. Okay. In that case, um, this is the less flexible dual land, so we'll go ahead and use this one. I'm gonna go ahead and fetch right now and get a Tundra. So I don't wanna draw a Tundra off of the uh, land here. All right, so I could just go for Will right now. So I will. If I will, what happens? Well, so if I will, I then ancestral myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana after that. Um, I can cryptic and palace jailer. I, I think I like that. If I if it doesn't land though, I've kind of like uh, run myself out of gas. But then again, I am gonna be drawing two cards per turn. I think it's fine. If he wasn't willing to, all right, so let's just cast this off as foretold. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, if he wasn't willing to counter earlier. Um, all right. One, two, get that colorless out of there. Three and four. Uncounterable palace jailer sounds good. This forces him to attempt to use his um, Proteus Staff, I think, which will just lock him up under the orb. Yeah, good game. 
Okay, good deal. And the nice thing there is, as foretold, at two counters means that I get to um, I get to play a counter spell on my opponent's turn off the as foretold. I have used it this turn due to the ancestral, but still, uh, very very nice to be able to ancestral twice in a game is is a good it's a good uh, way to <laughs> get yourself in a winning position, I think. All right. Well, anyway, that was it for that one. I hit the wrong button again. All right, we'll try round three. Starting to get very laggy. I may have to interrupt the video in order to um, maybe just shut everything down and start over and free up some memory. I'm not. I'm not really sure exactly what goes on, but I do know if you run Magic Online for too long, well, if I run Magic Online for too long, you certainly run into this problem here, so. We'll see. It was just such a great hand against Brawl. It was interesting, too, because I actually didn't win that hand with counters. I won it with um, mana and um, cards that he couldn't deal with. Um, Okay, here we are. Round three. There's a card I would play. There are a few cards I would play if somebody forced me somehow to play Baral that I don't see anyone use. Uh, and I'm not going to mention them because I don't want to face them. <laughs> but if you ask me, I guess I'll, I'll point it out. All right, so Bruise and Crom. Not exactly Vile Crom. I'll go ahead and keep this. This is a... A strong hand um, that's a little bit better because of the um, fact that it's fairly resistant to most, you know, like disrupt uh, thoughtsies and that sort of thing. City O Brass. So I do want to fetch here, and I want to vamp. The question is, what do I vamp for? Oh, are you kidding me? Really? Tell me that's not a stifle. It is. God dog it. All right, well. <sighs> whatever. Slows me down by a turn. So my opponent has effectively gone first now. Uh, interesting. Okay, sure. So I might actually go for a, I might actually go for uh, Chrome Mox here in order to um, go turn three to ready, which I think is, or turn two to ready, which I think is, well, it's not turn two, it's turn three to ready. But that's got a lot of, a lot of upside for me. Um, I would imprint probably. I don't know if it would be the impulse or the snare. If I had Dak Fade in, I'd do it for sure, right? I'd go for Dak. I'd attempt to steal his his relic. He'd have to sack it, and then we could play that way. I I think still though. Okay, I guess I won't go for anything. Good for you for having all the early game cards in the early game. Okay, uh, well, let's just play a land and pass, see what happens. I suppose it's better than getting two for one on the play I was considering. All right, you get a Marsh Flats there, Bubba. So hopefully it doesn't do too much here. All right. 
How about now? Do I get to make a play at the end of your turn yet? Okay, I do. Actually, interesting. Very interesting. So, I the jailer is the highest upside, but the boiler works. Hmm. There's a talisman in the boiler works. So, um if I get the talisman down next turn, I can still sit on snare, but it doesn't seem like he has a counter. Um or I can play boiler works, which he just can't counter. Um I'm I'm not I'm kind of far away from playing jailer, so I don't think that's the way to go. Jeweled amulet's also Jeweled Amulet's also an option simply because I can charge it and it gives me an artifact so that when I play Doretti, I can immediately s slam it. Sorry, guys. Uh, one second. Okay. Eh, having three year olds. I think I think I take the is at Boyle Rook, so uh Because it's plus two mana from my hand. And the other is plus one. So And then because I don't have I don't have like anything I'm not gonna run to ready into his open mana, so Oh, well, that's very nice. Let's see if we can stick a Grim. Okay, son, you can stay inside. I should have probably played a Wooded Foothills here so that I could counter a two drop. One, one moment, uh, again. apologize anyway <laughs> i love my boy so much he's he's trying to figure stuff out all right so uh so am i what do i play here um boiler works or foothills if i play boiler works i'm allowing him to play a two drop i don't think he has a two drop so i'm gonna play foot boiler works And I'll pick up Basic Island, because this means that I have the potential to just cast Brea next turn uh, off the Wooded Foothills, fetching a Plateau if I need to. I don't like, you know, counters down here, but I think long term there's a lot more. Um, yeah, there we go. Relic's gone. There's a lot more potential for this to be useful. I don't... I don't like cards like Relic of Progenitus in a format like this. It's just, it's just no way to know if you're going to need it, no way to know if it's going to be useful. And what you've, what he's done is, while the card replaces itself, so it doesn't hurt him much, it, um, it, it's one less card that he could use that could be doing something in his deck, basically. Um, so hold on a moment. All right, so that was probably the best scenario possible where he just played his commander there and did nothing. I'm actually, maybe I should have held the island only because I could have tesserated into a, uh, it, it tesserated into a um, Vettelkin Shackles here, but having not done that, um, son, I don't know. Try looking upstairs. Try looking upstairs. All right, so... Um, question is, can I, do I have enough mana? Do I have, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't have enough mana to play Tezzeret de ready and then just be done with it. So if I play Tezzeret here, um, so if I play Tezzeret, six, Uh, 
Uh, one floating. One, 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 one moment here. I, I, I'm trying to do math and help a three-year-old. Sorry, I, I after this game, I'm definitely going to pause and uh, help my boy see what he needs help with. You're going to have to wait, son. I think mom is at the store, okay? So anyway... Uh, uh. Um, all right, well, I can't play, well, I can, let's do it this way. I don't even know what I was thinking right now. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I haven't played in a while. It's just really, really difficult to do. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, so I can play one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could play my commander. I could play Doretti and then just take out Bruce Tarl, but then I, I potentially lose to Krom. So I think I will play my commander here. Thomas, just wait. Mama will come home. Uh, <laughs> Some, something like that, son. All right, I can't. The way I tap my mana won't let me leave up. Yes, son. All right, I'm going to pass. I don't even know if I'm making the right play right now. I, it's very difficult slash impossible to tell. <laughs> Uh, but I think maybe this puts me in a decent spot. If my opponent has a control magic effect, then it gets a little bit sideways, but I have the ready to kill my Brea. My opponent plays Krom, and he wants to smash in for damage. I probably just let it go. Don't care. Kill it off on my turn. Win the game. So I, I think, yeah, if he just kills Brea and dinks around with that, okay, great. Not the worst thing ever. Um, still haven't figured out what kind of counterspell my opponent has yet. Uh assume he does have a counter spell. I could test with Doretti and then follow up with Tezret perhaps uh, next turn. So I will try that. I'm going to play a land in case he has a uh, mana leak in his hand. Let's go for Doretti. Okay, Doretti sticks. Yes, son? Okay, well, come come here, son. You need a hug? Come here. Oh, big boy. All right, you give daddy hugs, okay? You'll feel better. You want to watch you want to watch the magic? You wanna, I want Do you want to watch daddy play? Do you want to watch daddy play magic? I want to go to the store. I know, son. I know you do. All right, so I'm going to snare this because it, it allows him to crash in and kill um, Doretti, which I don't want. Mm. I want to go to the store. And if he wants to fight over this, then I'm probably okay with that, actually. One. Mm. Wow, a Pyroblast? Main deck? It's getting pretty obnoxious, obnoxious to see that. All right, whatever. So now I've got three mana, so I need one more mana, and I can just take his Krom next turn when he, he kills Doretti. Or I can kill it with Brea and orb him. I would to go to the store. I know, son. Well, wait for Mom to come home and then see if she wants to go. Maybe she'll take you. How about that? Okay. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. I'll go to the store. Uh, all right, son. Just wait for Mama to come home. All right, so I need to get, I need more blue, uh, I need more islands specifically if I want to control magic Chrom, which I kind of do.
Oh, that's very nice. So I'm going to play this. I would to go to the store. I heard you, son. But I can't drive right now, okay? You have to wait for Mama. All right, let's try a Tezzeret. Excellent. Let us take his crom. I think this puts him in a pretty bad spot. And then I've got Palace Jailer to follow up. And opponent can't really play two spells without giving me cards. This is just all around good. We use Tezret, try and plus it up quickly get to winter orb levels i may search for a mox opal first depending on if i feel like i need mana but that's all assuming tezzeret lives i see my opponents playing with a, a fairly high amount of burn actually your elemental blasted a spell snare which means he didn't get to blast my tezzeret i think that's excellent for me all right so maybe he plays bruised tarl maybe not if he does it's useless so i'm happy about that okay son i love you all right, big boy. You got to wait for Mama. Do you want to play with your Play-Doh? Do you want to jump on your trampoline? Okay, if you want to go to the store, you're going to have to wait. Okay. You can do that, but you're going to have to wait, son. All right, well, sorry for the farther interjections, but uh, much as I like to make an unsullied video, uh, my son's my priority, so. He's getting... All right, so let's see what goes on here. That's nice. Uh, insofar as so I can I can potentially cast Brea attack with this guy see if he's got any tricks over there if he does I can tether at the um, like let's say he has a bounce spell I can tether it and untap the uh, shackles Okay. Excuse me for a moment. Thomas, if you want to go to the store, you have to wait patiently. Then you can go. Okay? Okay? You can go. You just have to wait. Okay. Uh, so I do want to plus up... I, so the thing is here, I want to plus up Tez. Um, I need... I need to have, if he has removal for Shackles, I lose Tezret, and then I'm in a much worse spot. So I very much want to uh, set things up so that if he has removal for Shackles, I don't lose. So I think the way to do that is attempt a Brea cast here. So what I'm going to do is after combat, I'm going to go ahead and charge this up. She's at the store, son. You can go, but you have to wait for Mama. All right, so let's see. So you got, what is this trick here? Rift. Okay. That's weird. It's my main phase. Um, how bad for me is this? It's actually really bad. Uh, because I didn't, because I didn't leave white untapped which is partially a function of being unable to focus, but also I just screwed up. So, okay. Um, on the other side, on the bright side, I get to get shackles down and it's not that much better for my opponent here. Yeah. I mean, he could hit me for four and then what? Thomas. Away from mama. Store. Do you want to go say hi to Henry? Okay, we'll just wait. She'll be home. Uh, 
Sorry, I hadn't realized that my wife needed to step out for a moment uh, for so long. And she was picking something up. We're actually quite close to the uh, store, but she may have found other things that she wanted to look at potentially, and that's probably where the extra time is coming from. So I would have actually postponed this video. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So I can take Bruise Tarl if I want. Don't particularly care to do that. Assume he's got a counter here. Um, so I want to make sure I leave at least two mana available, two mana back, so that I can steal his his flyer if he swings in with it. Which means any play I make, I need to save at least two mana for. So I don't want to play too hard around like what he could be doing, because he's low on cards. Six, seven. So I don't have enough mana to actually play that. All right. So what I'm going to do is get out Signet. Attempt to Palace Jailer. If he's got a counter, then he's got a counter. But uh, oops. Let's do this in a smart way. If he does not, then I could just win here. And if he does have a counter again, I can. Um, I have shackles up, so it's not the worst situation. And what is good about this is that if he has um, disenchant, as much as it sucks. Uh, to lose my shackles, I will get a card here. I could could draw a counter, in which case I could prevent his commander from coming down. Um, yeah. Okay. So he's going to lapse the jailer. All right. I guess we move on to the next round of can I do something? Okay. So. If he moves into his attack phase, of course, we just take Bruise Tarl, I guess. I don't know. It's a hill giant with no abilities right now, so I'm not, I'm not even sure that's... I'd take it just to protect my life total, I guess. Sure. Can't really do much there. All right, don't care about his commander at all. We'll go play, son. <laughs> okay. Uh, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. So if I play Coalition Relic, I can also play Palace Jailer. Um, and still have Shackles mana up. Okay. One, two, three, and four. This goes a little bad if my opponent is disenchant and he targets Coalition Relic, but if he does target Coalition Relic, then he hasn't targeted Vettelkin Shackles, which means this is pretty good. Okay, so now we can start drawing cards. That's a pretty good hand. All right, I've got to watch this clock too. Um, unfortunately, the heavy distraction has caused me to lose a lot of time this game, and I my opponent very well may be trying to win via timing me out. So I think drawing two cards per turn, though, in this state should lead to a win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards over there. Or mana, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total, potentially. Unexpectedly absent. Okie doke. 
I'm just going to draw it again. I don't really understand where that gets him. It's going to take the Monarch temporarily and then lose the game. Sounds good to me. Very silly. Very silly. All right. Get your, get your one card. This does make it easier. Okay. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Well, I guess it'll just be blue, blue, no. All right, so the trick here is to make sure he doesn't get to uh, draw a card off his commander. So we'll go ahead and do that. Bounce this thing. Attack. I mean, I really appreciate that horrible play quite a bit, actually. Not horrible playing, just it was a horrible play. Um, he knows, for example, that I actually have um, Tezzeret in my hand. So unless he's got some way to deal with this right now, that's just it. He didn't know I had Jace, but fact of the matter is next turn I would have drawn uh, next turn I would have drawn the um, if I hadn't shuffled right there I would have drawn the shackles anyway so I don't see the, 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 I don't think it was entirely well thought out knowing I have Tezzeret that he's going to get orbed so all right well it's clear I need to take some time go focus on my son I'm going to do that I apologize for the disruptions in the last one but again he's my uh higher priority so <laughs> it's just the way it goes and i will try to finish this setup today and hopefully you've enjoyed watching thank you i'll see you next time